studio about three days back came up with the announcement that me fumato a side-scrolling action rpg they've been cooking for a while is now on its way to pretty much every single console in addition to pcs and being funded through a kickstarter campaign as of this moment. So here's the thing, the goal with May Fumato over here is to make a triple A open world and kind of Metroidvania and to be honest it looks quite a bit impressive. Go ahead and check it out and make sure to stay tuned for that precise release date. I know for a fact there's at least a few of you here that have been patiently waiting to hear more about Mandragora, in which case you might be interested to know folks at the team just announced that the game is coming to basically all consoles and PCs upon release. When? They didn't say, but apparently late 2022. Now Mandragora is an upcoming side-scrolling action RPG, for those of you new, pretty much what they call nowadays a Soulsvania. Check it out, just make sure to stay tuned for that precise release date. Coming up next, it's After Image. Actually caught me by surprise on how marvelous looking of a hand-drawn game it looked like it is a few hours ago when I came across the reveal trailer. This game's an ARPG Metroidvania. Apparently it's some sort of a semi-open world-ish kind of thing with, well, you could probably tell one hell of an effort to make it really stand out. Check it out, this one's coming to all consoles and PCs in late 2022. Now, we have Ono Mutation M, which is at the moment one of the longest awaited Metroidvania games in the making and one of the top three most visually stunning platformers, so to speak, pixel art games of the past few years. Well here, this game is now finally coming to pieces and the PlayStation consoles as well only come March 17th. Check it out. So, a tiny bit short of a month back, Assemble Entertainment announced a March 21st, 2022 release date for a one-of-a-kind, two-and-a-half-dimensional side-scroller, which some of you might have already been familiar with from last year going by Aurora, or 
Aitora, I don't know, not Beitora, by the way. A Mesoamerican inspired Metroidvania with, of course, platformer elements. Here's for those of you who somehow missed out, this game's coming to PCs on Steam and GOG, like I mentioned earlier, March 21st. This is insane. Natsume Atari just released almost 30 minutes of gameplay preview of Yuden Chronicles Rising, a town building action RPG. Well, you know, at the same time, one of the AAA Metroidvania platformers in development since last year. See, Eden Chronicles Rising is due out for the PlayStation and Xbox consoles in addition to the Nintendo Switch and the PCs as well. Words has it mid to late this year, so keep it in mind for now. Our sins will catch up with us. You gotta admit, it's been quite a while, but the folks behind Salt and Sacrifice came up with the news no more than a few hours back. They're gonna be holding a beta test period for Salt and Sacrifice since March 18th this year to March 21st, only on the PlayStation consoles for some reason. Uh, anyway, Salt and Sacrifice is a 2D Souls, like actually one of the Soulsvania games in this list, and it's eventually landing on PCs as well on May 10th. Check it out. Right. It's Trick to Yomi, on the other hand, which the name itself kind of reminds me of 310 to Yuma for some reason. It's a, it's a, anyway, uh, it's, it's a stylish, if we're being fair platformer action side-scroller with a huge emphasis on Akira Kurosawa movies like The Seven Samurais, where basically you play as a sword man fighting to protect the village. Trek to Yomi releases this spring and it's a next generation console game only in addition to PCs of course. We have Dark Light, a science fiction based action platformer and pretty much in the same line of the Souls games in this genre. Well, here's the good news. Dark Light is now available on Steam through Early Access for about 15 bucks with a mostly positive review score as well. So check it out. The full game is also rumored to be coming out later this year. Choose what kind of legend you want to write. 
Moving on, we have Soldiers, which is actually a Soulsvania and one with plenty of exploration to boot and some actual story. Now, Soldiers actually comes with an interesting twist as well. This game's a totally non-linear based classic and you get to choose different classes as you go. Check it out, this game doesn't have a specific release date right now other than mid-2022 and into PCs and the Nintendo Switch only. Landscapes. But don't get too confident. Never underestimate the enemy. Will you be strong enough to succeed and bring your fellow soldiers back home? Soldiers. This is probably one of the most mind-blowing things I've actually heard this entire year. We have Crown Son that is sitting on a Kickstarter campaign that already gathered more than 10 times its initial goal and about 20,000 backers. Check it out. Crown Son is a hand-drawn Metroidvania with, well, as they touted, a strong design emphasis on exploration, combat, and a compelling story. Also, there's all sorts of Hollow Knight vibes as well, since this game's not coming out anytime soon. Check it out. This game is supposedly coming out late 2023. Coming up behind that, we have another project out of a Kickstarter campaign called Solomon's Demons, which is no joke. Don't even mess with the Solomon's Demons, if you know what I mean. This game is also an old school 2D action RPG with an open world vibe to it, and it's looking hella smooth. Here, this one's planned to be released on Steam as well as all major consoles come late 2023 as well. Check it out, and if you like, you can also visit their Kickstarter campaign. Talk about no jokes, we have Crude, a Souls-like fantasy platformer with Metroidvania elements and an open world map, starring Cosmos, which is an MMA fighter 
who suddenly finds himself teleported into a dark fantasy world and searches for a way to return home. Check it out, this game's a PC exclusive and due out later this year. For those of you who actually been waiting on Plague Huntress, the one and only self-described by the two man creators as an action exploration focused 90s inspired classic Metroidvania project. Well here's the thing, this game is still in development and because it's a two man job, it's taken a bit longer than you might have expected. It's not cancelled so to speak and probably due out late 2022 up to early next year. Now, Momodora Moonlit Farewell, on the other hand, is now on its way to PCs via Steam, the company announced alongside a brand new trailer. Instead of make sure to keep an eye out for a possible release date in the coming months. See, Moonlit's Farewell is actually the sequel to Momodora 3 and set five years after the events of which, and pretty much jam-packed with action and the same gorgeous graphics the series has always been known for. Check it out. On the other hand, it's The Glimmer and Mirror. Actually, one less story-rich action game in this list and a shooting game. Well, actually, there's no need of, of a demonstration over here with this one. You can actually play this game on Steam through a free playable demo and the full game set to be coming out mid to late this year. Check it out. Now, Doom Blade is currently slated to arrive on PCs via Steam with a release date to be announced soon. Now, this trailer right over here, if I'm being frank, pretty much speaks for itself and that how this game is going to be one hell of a metroidvania that carries with it a decent deal of an artistic effort. Now, check it out and just go and make sure to stay tuned for that precise release date soon. We 
have Transmute, on the other hand, one of the Metroidvania games I've actually been waiting for ages to hear more about, and so to speak, now actually coming to PCs on Steam in about a few months from now. See, if we're talking classics, Transmute over here easily takes the cake, as it also takes inspiration not only from the Metroid games, but the Contra, Castlevania, and a lot more. Check it out in case you have missed it. <laughs> Next up is Everblade, a pretty varied kind of platformer, so to speak, where you can do all that jumping, fighting, climbing, and even flying, and then also there's all sorts of puzzles going on in this game. Actually a pretty decent game too, in my opinion, you could tell the effort is right there in its full potential if we're talking nostalgia. So anyway, take a look, this game is coming to PCs on Steam come May 6 this year. Last but not least, it's Lords of Exile. One last 8-bit side-scrolling platformer in which you play as a knight seeking revenge. Now, this gives a combination of classic retro mechanics and a linear level design in an 8, much in the same vein as the old Castlevania games from all the way back 40 years ago. Check it out, it's actually coming to pieces in about a few months from now we're here. 